A very good afternoon. My name is Ushu Mukelo. You can also call me Fred. I'm a political science major here at the University of Scranton. My country of choice uh, for the low income nation is Rwanda. So I'm here to present the historical, political, and uh, social and economic characteristics of this low income country located in Africa. Bear with me here as we get more details in the process. For the fact file, Rwanda is a country located in Africa, specifically in the East African region. It's a presidential republic. Um, its population as of 2018, according to the statistics from the World Bank, is about 12.5 million. Uh, its area is 26 square kilometers. The capital, Kigali, is located at the center of the country. And the official language is English, but Kinyarwanda is also used in many of the official work. Um, the main, uh, the ethnic groups of this country include the Hutu, Tutsi, and Tua. This country is also a member of the Commonwealth of Nations. It did host the Commonwealth Heads of Government meetings in 2018. Ethnic composition is very important in understanding this small African nation. The Hutu make up about 85% of the Rwandans, uh, the Tutsi about 14%, and the Tua, the original inhabitants according to history, make about 1% as of now. Uh, the politics of this country has, have been very complicated. In the beginning, this country was a monarchy for a very long time, just like its neighbor in the South, Burundi. Uh, the very prominent um, kings before its independence were Mwami Mutara III Rudahigwa and um, Mwami Kigeri V, who succeeded uh, Mutara in 1959-1961. Uh, the revolution of 1959 is very important because that almost marked the end of the monarchy since the Belgians, who were the colonial masters of Rwanda at the time, did not want to see a monarchy continue to exist. Um, it was a time when they were introducing um, a Republican government in Rwanda. So the exile, the exile of President uh, of Mwami Chijeri in 1959 also involved many of uh, many of the uh, Tutsi uh, uh, Rwandans who left, who fled with the king um, to neighboring countries. Um, the Republic, since independence, you know, the Republic began in 1962 after independence with the first president being Gregoire Kaivanda, and he was succeeded by Juvenal Hayermana, who ruled up to the time of his uh, assassination in a plane crash in Kigali, and that was 1984, marking the beginning of a very horrific moment in this country's history, the death of about 800,000 Tutsi and moderates being killed by the majority Hutu. Um, after, to end genocide, there was a creation of the unity government that was led by Pasteur Bezimou, who was the president, and Paul Kagame of the Rwandan Patriotic Front, a rebel group that came from neighboring Uganda as the vice president. Um, 1994, pro, um, uh, post-genocide to 1989, was a time of reconstruction, reconciliation, and economic revival. But most of the economic revival was not done until after the elections of 1994, of 1999 uh, that so President Kagame began his presidential term in 2000. President Kagame has been a president since, to, since 2000. Um, what we see with his government is economic boom. The country is doing well economically, but at the same time there is a crackdown on both opposition uh, parties and their leaders and the press, not only the local press, but also the international press with uh, BBC uh, Kenya Rwanda version being banned in Rwanda. Uh, it has also been characterized, his government has been char characterized by wars in DRC, uh, which many Western 
uh, media and organizations blame President Kagame for um, uh, for promoting. Um, his, uh, his regime is also involved in crackdown on civil society organizations, including the UN and Human Rights Watch. The society in Rwanda, what we can majorly look at is right after genocide ended, there was unity government created, which was meant to reconcile the conflicts between the two uh, rival um, uh, ethnic groups, the Tutsi and the Hutu. Uh, President Bizimungu and Vice President Paul Kagame, you know, pretty much managed the country between 1994 and 1989. There was reconciliation, but also revenge on Hutu uh, by the Tutsi-led um, Rwandan Patriotic Front. Uh, refugees were coming back, both Hutu and Tutsi. Accusations of being part, or part, part, or being a participant in genocide, cost cost many lives and also. Um, um, and also longer um, prison times without justice. The government of Paul Kagame and the RPF continued to arrest genociders based on accusations. Kagame accused the West, the Western media, uh, of inciting of inciting more crises in the country and not reporting facts. And uh, this crackdown also extended to local media as well. Human rights, human rights watch researcher was denied access as recent as 2018. Uh, the economics. This is very important because most of the most of the discussion, most of the work in the web text was surrounding on the economics of these poor or middle income countries. Rwanda, of course, right now is a low income country with projections from uh, World Bank and the IMF um, stating that it would, be, um, it would be an economic giant to come. Uh, projections being uh, by 2035, this would be a middle income country and that by um, 1250, this would be a high income country. Looking at this, uh, just like many sub-Saharan countries, Rwanda is very rural. And as the, as the CIA World Factbook puts it, 63% of the exports are agricultural products. You know, the economics and structural reforms have been made possible by funds and loans from the World Bank and AMF. Other economic activities that bring forex or foreign exchange, are tourism, mining, um, yeah, coffee, coffee and tea growing. Thanks to the economic development and poverty education strategies, or EDPRS, as many Rwandans know it, which was in two phases as of now. Uh, phase one ran from 2008 to 2012, and phase two from 2013 to 2018. According to the World Bank, Rwanda expected to be middle income country by 1235 and high income nation by 2050. The GDP is growing by about 7.5%. Um, the per capita GDP itself is 5%. And then the most important key to look at is the purchasing power parity um, for Rwanda, which is at about 24.68 billion. And these figures are as of um, 2017. So the economy, again, poverty, much even with promising numbers from the AMF and the World Bank, Rwanda's poverty is still very high. As of 2015, this was about 39% of its population being poor, but this was again lower as compared to the 57% in um, 2006, 2006. As of 2017, Rwanda was still very rural at about 74.2%. And um, the urban only covers 25.8% of the country. Um, this reduction was a, as a result of high GDP growth. Okay, let me see. All right, so these are my sources. But before we look at the sources, I also want to say this. Rwanda, just like many low income countries, has had political instabilities. And political instabilities usually have an effect on the economic growth and development of any given country. 
um, many thousands of people dying in 1984. There was a crisis in 1959. There was um, ethnic tensions when it was still a monarchy. All this contributed to the low economic numbers from this country. But with peace and um, political stability uh, that the country has seen at least since uh, genocide in 1994, the country has been successfully, uh, has, has shown success economically um, up to now. With these numbers uh, from World, World Bank and IMF, it is expected that it will be at a level just like many developed nations with time. So we can also see that right after uh, genocide, the Rwanda did not achieve its economic growth as expected immediately, but this came after several years. From 1994 alone to 1989, that's about five years which the, uh, the web text mentions that, you know, usually after civil war, it takes very long, at least five to seven years for a country to get back um, to an economic stability as we've seen in this case of Rwanda. So just like looking at the political, social, economic, and uh, um, political, social, uh, economic um, characteristics of Rwanda, it's, I think, very clear that this country being, um, being a poor, a poor nation, being a low income nation, it has pretty much all the characteristics that we've seen in web text. And it's, um, it's a proof that war, civil war uh, to be specific is not a good thing as far as it, uh, you know, uh, the economy of any given country is concerned. With that, I'll be very happy to look at, um, at the comments when I post this, uh, I'll be more than happy to respond. Um, Again, uh, thanks, and my name, I've been Ushu Mukelo, a political science uh, major at the University of Scranton. Uh, thank you so much for watching.